Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial where I will show you how to connect Python and Redis database system. And what we will do in this program is that we will print simple messages like hello message. Uh, we can return some strings or integers or any other data type and other things as we move forward. So I have a crash course on Redis. If you didn't check that, uh, I recommend that you check it out. It's less than 30 minutes video that will give you a good foundation and a big chunk of knowledge on how Redis works and so on. Open your command prompt and uh, you can open your Redis server. All right. And another window and you will type Redis CLI or client. So uh, we will have the server running uh, in the background and the client here. So you can type ping, you get pong as a response. Um, you can set key uh, value pairs, for example, set name to back. So get name, back, and so on. So this is Redis. It's basically um, an in-memory data structure store that was released in 2009. Key value pair design of database like I showed you. More like an object in JavaScript or a dictionary in Python or JSON data even. And one of the main differences between Redis and other NoSQL databases is the data structure that Redis provides. So instead of dealing with the table abstraction, like in MongoDB for instance, Redis can leverage data types like strings, lists, and all the other data types um, using commands like in most programming languages, like very easy to use really. So again, I recommend that you check out this um, crash course. All right. So what we will do is we will write some Python code and I will show you how to connect Redis to Python. Okay. So let me actually create a folder and call that um, Python Redis demo. We'll open that with VS code. You can use any text editor you like. All right. So I will open the integrated terminal here and I will run um, in one terminal. I will run the Redis server. Okay. So this should be working in the background and I will add another uh, terminal. All right. So two windows actually working this in the background, the Redis server and our PowerShell. All right. So let's go ahead and create a Python file main.py. What I want to do is I want first to install the Redis module. Let's maximize that again. So pip install Redis. Okay. Uh, as I have it already, uh, I got this message requirement already satisfied for you. If it's the first time you will get a um, different outcome. All right. So let's uh, minimize that. Let's clear the prompt. Uh, the terminal. So the first thing in our file, uh, we need to import the Redis library, right? Import Redis. Okay. Then I want to define the connection parameters. So we need a local host and we will need the port. The port for Redis is always 6379, always. So Redis host will declare a variable called Redis host, and this will be equal to the local host and Redis port and this will be equal to 6379. Okay. Next, what I want to do is I want to create a function. So I will call this function Redis string. Okay. Because I'll show you how we can get from the Redis server, how to retrieve um, a string, for example. So uh, define Redis underscore string. Okay. And uh, I will wrap my code in a try except block. Okay. So let's try first. I want to declare another variable. I will call just R, which stands for the Redis object because I'm basically instantiating a Redis object. So the Redis module dot um, strict Redis. Okay. So Strict Redis, it's a class that provides a Python interface to all the Redis commands and an implementation of the Redis protocol. So the Strict Redis takes um, different parameters, a host, a port, and decode responses. 
So the host will be equal to the Redis host and the port um, is going to be the Redis port. Port, okay. And the last parameter is the code responses. Okay, so the code responses, it should have a Boolean value. Okay, so decode responses equal to, and we'll set it to true. So this flag here directs the client to convert the responses from Redis into Python strings, because naturally we cannot read from Redis directly to Python. Next, I want to set uh, a message. We will set a simple hello world message. Okay, so we'll take the R instance dot set and be careful that set should be in small letters not like in the redis client where you can write uh, in a capital or small letters in python it should be in small letters and we're going to set a message and the value for this message is hello world then we want to retrieve that hello world message from redis so I'll declare another variable, call it message, the R object dot get, and we want to get that message here, the key. And finally, we want to print that message. Okay. So we can say now accept. You can leave it like that and just can say um, something went wrong. Or you can say accept exception as e and um, you can print the e it doesn't matter in this case it will return whatever exception occurred all right and let's have if name is equal to main let's invoke that function redis string all right and let's run the file and we get hello world. If we will check the Redis server now, we'll find that accepted on that port in, on the local host. Uh, after that accepted and returned the message, the client closed the connection. Okay, let's get back to our terminal and let's add another function. So in this function, I will return a simple integer and I will increment it and I will return both the number and the incremented number. Let's have a function called Redis integer. And also I will wrap it in a try except. So now it's actually like that. Let's minimize it a little bit. All right. So again, I will have the same object, the same R object. We'll copy that quickly and let's actually set a key called number and uh, the number will be let's say 100 okay this is the original number so i will declare a variable i will call it o underscore number and this will be equal to the r object or the redis object dot get command uh, or method in this case and we want to get that number okay so this is the original number but if we will take the r or the redis dot inker command inker basically it increments any integer by one all right so we will pass inside the number and again i will create or declare another variable i will call it inker number to be equal to r dot get that number because it has been changed then we will print both numbers so I will print um, the original number and the incremented number okay except that we can say um, something went wrong all right, and just to show you that the try except works, let me make it like that. And let's actually invoke the second function, redis underscore integer. All right, let's run the file one more time. 
hello world 100 then something went wrong okay because I have changed the name of um, the variable so number we'll run that again hello world 100 then 101 okay because it has been incremented by one you'll take a look to the server find that accepted okay two times you'll find all the details here okay um, the connections between the Python and the Redis the conversion of um, the different commands and returning of these commands or the outcome in the Python file okay so I hope this was useful to you guys thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next videos